Good afternoon. This is Chris Brecher with Brecher Trading. Three reasons to go short. Now I need the trigger. I'm going to go over a number of reasons that I could get bearish, but I have to see that reversal candle or pattern set up. I'll show you some examples. Brecher Trading, click on the start 10 day free trial. It will guide you to what you get in your free trial. Now let's go into the broad market, show you what I'm talking about. That's number one. Number one, number one. This has been in a massive, massive bull market ever since I started in the business. It's had that upslope. What's the difference this time? Look at this doji on a monthly. I warned a lot of people down here when everybody wanted to get bearish that we are oversold on a monthly. This is what you need. You need it to work off its oversold by doing nothing. So this time it did nothing as that monthly doji and it's starting to turn down. If this finally doesn't hold, so this has been two or three years, you're talking about down to here, which is another like 14 points. What does that mean? What it means is there are alternatives to equities. So this is a weekly chart. I think you see a mile away what I'm watching. So there's going to be different layers of warning signs. Here's the first warning sign. Right here. If it doesn't hold this zone right in here, you can see it a mile away. Then it goes to here. That's like 159. And there you have some support at 158, 159. But then when you go under it, then you got uh, 155, and then there's nothing. Yeah, that would lead to a massive correction, I think, in the equity markets if this got under here, which would violate the weekly and the monthly. Now, what would make it do that? The first thing is, what do bonds not like? Well, obviously, they don't like if the Fed isn't buying them, obviously. But the other is this, the commodities. You don't want to see the commodities go straight up. Now, when you do a basket of commodities, the best way I do it is the Bloomberg Commodity Index, whether it's the futures, whether it's the index, or the DBC ETF. What do you notice about all these? They're at monthly highs. They are higher than they were all the way back to 2015. Markets hate inflation. So this whole crap about that inflation's transitory, this is where the inflation gauge was when the pandemic started. Now we're over here. I mean, that's not transitory to me. And that could get the bonds to finally have a bear market, which would hurt the equity markets. So the first thing I'd watch tomorrow is a lot of the commodities. I just go back and look, and I go to, let's say, a four-hour chart of wheat, corn, soybeans, oat futures, random length lumber. Look at that little cup and handle forming. Yeah, if they keep going up, then you're going to see the upper right keep going down. That's the first reason I'd have to get bearish. The other reason is the bonds have had this last, last leg down in the NASDAQ is really near new highs. So there's a big divergence. Usually growth stocks don't like interest rates going up. Just keep that in mind. This is the other warning signs. I'm really into the 310.16 MACD. And when I saw the MACD oversold right here, that's when you take in some of your shorts. See that little doji right in there? The problem is most of the time, this has been oversold and worked off any price resistance by exploding higher. This time, the MACD has gone to the zero line and is stuck at overhead resistance. You could see it better on an hourly on the right. Now we need the trigger. We need one of those dojis or reversal candles or some kind of pattern like that. You don't see it yet. Yeah, maybe under 15 too, but you're going to miss 130 points. So I'll try to zero in and show you better examples of it. But I also want to show you other indexes. S&P sold off over the zero line, can't get over this resistance zone. Remember this time down here, we went down fast. So you had very little resistance on the way up. This time we've meandered down until the last time. And yeah, you were able to snap back because of lack of resistance. But now there's a number of resistance zones 
all the way in here that I think are going to make it hard for the markets to rally more, especially when this is already getting overbought. Now, like I said, you could blow through these. You need to see reversal candles. Now, the first thing other than bonds I'm watching is going to be the Chinese market. You know all about that Evergrande stuff going on. On the left, I'm going to put a weekly chart. And on the right, I'm going to put a daily chart. And what you're going to notice is that bear flag right here. So here's a bear flag that has formed under support. So if this breaks down, you're talking about another 1,000 points or 1,500 points on the China market all the way down to here. That's a weekly chart all the way down to here. That can help sentiment in the U.S., no doubt about it. How about Germany, Europe market? Well, you had that beautiful doji uh, reversal candle on a weekly. But the daily, all it's doing is working it off and oversold it to resistance. So the next thing I'm going to watch is if this starts breaking, these little bottoms right here, right there. If those start breaking and it plows under the 200, yeah, that's going to be a big warning sign for the ES as well. The other thing I'm going to be watching are multiple time frame stuff of the S&P and the NASDAQ. So what do I mean by that? I showed you the hourly and I showed you the weekly, but now I want to show you a 15 minute. So there's a 15 minute. What's the difference now between this sell off right here? This sell off had three points of contact to draw a trend line. We don't have any now. So my trigger on these, as you see, there's a good three points of contact. I want to see three points of contact. You'll probably first see it on a five-minute chart. You don't have it yet. You had it down here. You had it down here. You don't have it yet. So you need to see it on at least a short-term chart. Then you want to see a top develop on a 15-minute chart like you see here. Then you want to see one on an hourly chart like you saw here or here. And then those could plow through and make this daily chart look like a head and shoulders top and it plows through it. But the first step is going to be watching the bond market, watching the Asian and German markets, and watching to see how this navigates now, this overbought at resistance, and now I'm going to look for ultra short-term reversal patterns, which I don't see yet. I want where I, I get this kind of futzing around where I can draw three points of contact and I feel a lot more comfortable. Now, obvious, like, like I said earlier on the NASDAQ, under 15.2, then it's obvious. But I want to see some kind of 10 or 5 or even 1 kind of three points of contact where it'll break this uptrend. So that's how I'm going to play this week. Like I said, much more than three reasons to get bearish. And you got that Chinese Evergrande thing again, which goes with the Chinese market. Then I'm going to look for three points of contact on ultra short term charts to be the big warning signal to start leaning short. Have a great rest of your day. Take care.